Okay, in this training video, I'm going to go over how to create a form in RS Forms Pro. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is go to the Components menu and go to RS Form Pro and Manage Forms. Okay, I currently have a blank form out here from CAS IT. Um, it's a form that contains no fields. It's just really a blank form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to use my copy now to go in and change to an alumni update form. Okay, the first task I'm going to have when I open up this form is to rename it. And I'm just going to change its name to alumni update. Now I'll just copy and paste. Alright, I'm going to apply that, which saves it. Okay, it took me back to the components menu, and from there, we're going to start creating our form. Okay, the first um, the first item I'm going to put in here, I don't actually <laughs> have um, have the text for, but we're going to create a heading. And what this is is we're just going to place some text in. box to um, introduce this form. Alright, let's save that. Here, that will create us just a little nice area at the very, very top of our form to um, say hi, thank you for visiting our page, please fill out the following form, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't have the text written yet, so we're just going to leave it there for future <laughs> um, changes. Okay, our, ne our next field is going to be a text box for a, for a first name. First name. That's my field name. And the caption is actually what shows up on the form. The field name is what is emailed to you but the caption is what the user who's visiting your website actually sees. So I usually try to just make those the same. Alright, my next one that I need is middle initial. So I'm going to create another text box. Middle initial. I didn't mean to make it that long. Let me go back and edit that. Notice whenever I click the edit icon over here, it opens up my text box parameters. I'm going to create a size over here of, a, say, 10. So it'll be kind of short just in case somebody does actually write their full middle name. All right, I'm going to hit save. And last name. Okay, my next field is going to be maiden name. Okay, my next field is gender. I'm going to go and create a drop down menu for gender. And under my choices, which they call items here, I'm going to put female, male. And I'm going to click save. Make sure they're both there. Yep, that looks good. Okay. The next field is date of birth. So I'm going to put that as a text box. Date of birth.
And what I'm going to do, just to remind people, I could select it from my autocomplete, as you can tell I do the same fields quite a lot. I'm going to put in parentheses day day slash month month slash year 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 in hopes my users will follow that as they type in their date. Um, I don't want a size of 20 on this so I'm going to go with say just in case somebody made a couple of extra dashes or something I'm going to go with a size of 12. Okay, my next field is home address. And I'm going to make that field a size of 40 characters. But if they, um, if anybody wants to type more, that it would just uh, keep going until. Um, there's really no upper bound. If I wanted to put an upper limit on how much can be typed into a field, I would put a max size rule right here. And this is just how many characters will be allowed to be typed into a field. Um, the size is only kind of determined by what the layout is. As you can see, this one's a lot less than this one. I think this was 10 and this was 20. So just a little viewpoint as to what all this means. Okay, my next the next field I need is city. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay, and state. That is just 15 in case somebody actually writes out the whole state name. Okay, next one zip. And I'm going to put that at 10. Okay, next we need a phone number. And I'm going to put that at a size 15 just in case uh, by chance we might get an international student or alumni. Okay, next field is email. Okay, my next field would be date of UAB graduation. Yeah. Next field I have on my list is graduate or professional degree institution. I'm going to think about this for a minute. Um, I'm going to put a text area for that one just in case it should be maybe more than a couple of rows or maybe more than somebody might type into a text box. Five, five rows should be more than enough. It'll allow um, the field to accept 
actually more than five rows, but that's just the standard view. I'm going to go back and make sure that it picked up my N. <laughs> Degree of Institutio. Um, yeah, let's go change, change that. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> okay. Um, next up is current employer. And another text box. And next will be another text box of job title. And next is employer location. Okay, and the next field is going to be a text area because it can contain a lot of data, information to share. And I'm going to make this one 10 rows. So it's a little bit longer and people realize that they have a um, pretty large area to type out the information they would like to share with us. I'm going to click Save. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go up here and click on Apply to, which will save my whole form so in case something happened, I would not lose any of my work. Alright, so I think that's all the fields we need as far as collecting data. But there are a couple other ones that we're going to add to this form. And the next one is going to be an anti-spam um, component. And I'm, under the caption, I'm going to include some directions about typing out the four letters. Yes, please type in the four letters below and click submit to share your alumni update. All right, and the last thing I need to do is to add in a submit button. Oops. Okay, I think that's all that we had to put onto this form. So I'm going to apply this. And then I'd like to go out and preview it. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of test information in here. 